Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. In this uh, group of the lectures on the name of musculoskeletal ultrasound, uh, I'm going to cover almost 80-90% of topics in this field. And it'll take a little time, just be patient and little by little I will upload uh, all of them, prepare and upload. Now let's do it. This one is uh, for the public, uh, but the others uh, goes to the master group. If you like it and you think you can learn some stuff, it will be not bad idea join to the master group. Okay, the uh, musculoskeletal structure has very specific unique in most of the time and they are uh, superficial. This help us we use the highest frequency and approach to that uh, target organ and create image. Uh, with the development of those uh, machines and technology, nowadays, like the echo or other uh, ultrasound modality, in the musculoskeletal, ultrasound play a big role, at least in most cases, is the first choice for uh, uh, tools for diagnosis of musculoskeletal disorder. Uh, as you can see, we have dealing with the muscle, tendon, ligament, uh, nerve, vascular sometime, and fascia, and uh, capsule. Now let's uh, go and uh, go one by one first uh, selecting transducer. For the ultrasound of the musculoskeletal, we use a linear transducer uh, or probe. The reason is that in opposite of the other uh, transducer like Kelvinier or Vector, that the sound beam uh, goes divergence uh, from the probe. In this uh, linear, sound uh, come out parallel to each other at perpendicular to this uh, footprint of the probe. In that case, uh, we will have a less, one of the most important artifact in musculoskeletal is that uh, anisotropy. Uh, we will have less uh, this problem. Later, I am going to talk about that artifact. And we, are, we can use a two type. There are two type of foot, uh, footprint transducer, linear transducer. One of them is regular. Another is hockey stick uh, type of the transducer. Hockey stick is better for those uh, teeny structure, especially in hands and the ankle. Uh, it's very useful for maneuver, maneuver and getting good image with high quality. The frequency of the transducer we use depending on the depth of uh, our image. It can be something between 6 to 18 and sometimes even uh, higher a little. Some, uh, some uh, company and vendor, they create a little even over 18. They, all of them dependent of the depth of the structure we evaluate. But uh, nowadays with this uh, high quality images, uh, ultrasound is the resolution of ultrasound is much better than the other modality like the MRI or CT scan except the bone and cartilage. For example, the highest resolution for the best uh, uh, MRI system is about one millimeter, but in the trans uh, in the transducer and ultrasound, for example, with 10 megahertz probe, our uh, resolution at the depth of the five, centi uh, five centimeter that it can go penetration up to five centimeter resolution will be 0.15 millimeter and if we use it five megahertz the resolution at the same depth become 0.5 so it's much higher than the MRI so for that reason the Ultrasound is priority to those musculoskeletal disorder diagnosis. And uh, after the uh, transducer, uh, we are going to uh, position of the patient. Depending on the type of study, we have to do some maneuver and give a specific position for a specific uh, 
study that in each topic I am going to explain in detail. Not here. First, let's see some uh, terminology and term that we use in the description of the finding. First, ecogenicity. Ecogenicity is the amount of the uh, gray scale pattern in our image. That's dependent on how much energy of the sound come back from that tissue to the probe and machine created for us some uh, gray scale of the image. That is the definition of ecogenicity. When ecogenicity goes high, we call it, it show brighter, we call it hyper echo. For example, here in the general, if we have correct optimizing image, muscle and soft tissue like the liver, myocardium, uh, muscle, those structure or kidney, they have mid gray structure ecogenicity. Mid gray, for example, here we have muscle on the shoulder, and we have mid gray. This is if we go uh, become brighter, we called it hyper echo, like this fascia around the muscle bundle. Here we have hyper echo, or here at the surface of the cartilage uh, joint. Here we have hyper echo, or the tendon of the muscle. Uh, here is a long head of the biceps is a little brighter than the mid gray echogenicity of the muscle. We called it hyper echo. When we don't have any echogenicity back to the sound beam, we called it on echo. It on echo can be due to the fluid collection. It can be interstitial edema or the blood. So it become on echo like here. We can see, or no, posterior shadow that is still is on echo. You have to remember uh, that when we talk about the hypo echo or hyper echo, it's comparing to the mid gray echogenicity. That's it. For example, here the normal uh, tendon should be a little hyper echo and iso echoic. Iso means even. All the structure inside of that is the same echogenicity and pattern, we call it isoechoic. So, homogeneous and hyperecho. On here, we can see the tendon because of the damage and interstitial edema, it becomes mid gray. Uh, not hyperecho, but compared to the normal, we can call it hyperecho compared to the normal if we're comparing two sides each other. Uh, but is compared to the mid gray of the muscle, we called it mid gray here. Just remember that definition. Uh, and we have two other terms longitudinal view and uh, transverse or short axis view. Longitudinal is when our sound beam plate, plane or plate, or footprint, long axis of the footprint, is parallel to the long axis of that structure. If we twist it 90 degrees, it becomes short axis. And in this case, you can see short axis of the, uh, this tendon. In ultrasound of the musculoskeletal, we are dealing with uh, skin, subcutaneous tissue, muscles, tendons, ligaments, synovial membrane, nerve, cartilage, and bone. So now let's see each of them has what sonography features. First, skin and subcutaneous. In normal scan, if the musculoskeletal, usually uh, we don't see those two layer of the skin that is epidermis and dermis. We can see two layer hyperecho and a little mid gray between them. That will be our skin. But if we use pedof and higher frequency, 18 uh, to 20 megahertz, maybe we can differentiate those two layers easier. Here you can see we have epidermis and dermis. Then we have subcutaneous or hypodermis. Subcutaneous tissue that is fat and uh, many of those uh, follicle hair are in that area, it looks like uh, hyper echo, a little hyper echo if we compare to the muscle beneath that. Uh, and this image is a little not optimized because is muscle it show hyper echo too much 
we have to increase a little gain but generally subcutaneous tissue that is fat is hyper echo compared to the uh, echogenicity of the muscle and we can see some uh, hyper echo line that parallel to the skin uh, goes that they are connective tissue septa that lobulate the fat uh, in the subcutaneous tissue that is a feature of the all subcutaneous tissue Sonography feature of the fat, depending on the organ and location and age of the patient, will be different. But generally, the fat, especially subcutaneous fat, has a heterogeneous pattern, mid-gray echogenicity, with the hyper-echolinear septa that is irregular. Here, for example, on the breast, you can see this pattern is more prominent and depending on the age, we can see a little hyperecho, more prominent septa. We have in the jo uh, capsule, uh, joint capsule, we have different type of the uh, fat. We call it articular fat pad, especially one of them is hofa fat pad that we can see on the knee. I am going to talk about each of those features in the related topic in different lectures. Whenever we have interstitial edema, the fat and subcutaneous tissue uh, it, uh, get it interrobular uh, inter edema and it gives us the pattern we call it cobblestone like that and it is a specific uh, characteristic for interstitial edema in that area subcutaneous that it can be due to cellulitis or congestive heart failure or any other reason that cause interstitial edema as you know uh, the muscle has a combination of the fascicles that they are aligned next to each other and covered by the connective tissue that we called it perimysium and those uh, connective tissue not only around the fascicle around the muscle we can see we called it epimysium and those fascicle divided to the smaller fiber we called it muscle fiber again those are con uh, that finally become sacrolemma uh, this uh, pattern give in the long axis of the muscle as a laminar hypoecho structure parallel to each other that's interrupted by the uh, perimysium as hyperecho line as you can see here on the short axis it show uh, irregular oval round or irregular shape of hypoecho and those perimysium we can see as a hyper echo line with different uh, shape and uh, echogenicity. Some of them are stronger, some of them are uh, weaker, but this is those pattern uh, that we can see in long and in short for the normal muscle. Whenever we have this pattern disturbed, we have a pathology. For example, on this one, you can see this laminar long axis of the muscle, laminar suddenly uh, disrupted and become a hypoecho that represent acute injury to that area of the muscle and we can measure it. Or in this one, in short axis of the muscle, we can see a hyperecho structure has changed at that area represent fibrotic uh, changes due to scar tissue. The sonographic feature of the tendon must, uh, is as a hyper echo lami fine laminar or a fibrillar pattern in the long axis. You can see on this view much better here the same, but uh, gain is a little low because you can see muscle is too much hyper echo. If increased, we can see the, pat the same pattern and it, uh, the tendon can be surrounded by uh, synovial tendon sheet we call bursa here you can see as a hypo echo rim around the tendon in the longitudinal in short if usually it's very hard to see it in the short axis tendon looks like 
uh, hyper echo if it's perpendicular our sun beam is perpendicular to that area it looks like the hyper echo fine texture that is the feature on short axis and uh, you have to remember some uh, tendon doesn't have a synovial sheet they have peritendon sheet that in that case like this uh, patellar uh, tendon it uh, it looks like the hyper echo line very teeny that you cannot discriminate from the tendon unless there is some inflammation and tendonitis there is anisotropy here is anisotropy i'm going to talk in shortly in the next few uh, slides the sonographic feature of the nerve a peripheral nerve in the long axis uh, looks like a fascicular pattern in the big uh, nerve like here tibia it's more prominent this fascicular or laminar pattern usually you can see every other one hyper echo hypo echo hyper echo those uh, feature anatomy of the longitudinal in the major uh, peripheral uh, nerve but if you go a little smaller uh, for example here we have median nerve that pattern we have it still fascicular you can see fascicular but it's not clear and prominent like this one in short axis and uh, I forgot the, uh, the it looks like very close to uh, like especially in the wrist looks like the tendon but tendon compared to the nerve in long axis tendon are more hyper echo compared to the nerve that is hypoecho in short axis or axial uh, cross-section the nerve looks like cryptiformis uh, or honeycomb pattern especially in big uh, nerve and they have a uh, hyper echo rim that is a characteristic feature of the peripheral nerve whenever we ha have any uh, injury like the edema for example here in the carpal tunnel syndrome you can see median nerve texture has been changed and a little hyperemy usually when we put color we shouldn't see color uh, blood flow inside of the nerve but when we have the hyperemia we can detect it and here we have elastography of the median nerve as you can see uh, the stiffness of median in carpal tunnel syndrome has been increased a lot that I am going to talk about the nerve and pathology of nerves in a different lecture later as you know the joint the surface of the joints and disc covered by the articular uh, cartilage or hyaline uh, cartilage hyaline uh, cartilage in echo looks like hypoechoic band with uh, anterior uh, surface hyperecho and smooth and have a thickness that this thickness in each joint is different and has a specific uh, feature that uh, I'm not going to talk in this lecture just you have to remember that it should be have hyper echo at the anterior and posterior to the bone connected to the bone and hypo echo between them in the pathology situation the thickness of uh, cartilage will change and can lose that hyper echo border surface as you can see this is normal and this one has been thinning and losing hyper echo uh, border or here hyper echo border become thinner in linear probe when the sound hit the hyper reflective surface like the ligament tendon all those hyper surface area when hit uh, not perpendicular and uh, ang with angle some spots especially those that has more angle uh, reflected sound energy decrease and finally the result will be hypoecho on that spot for example here we have uh, patellar uh, tendon you can see at this level is become more hypoecho to this phenomenon we called anisotropy 
uh, that is the type of the artifact. Uh, just very easy, we can fix that one if we with heel toe rocking or moving or angling, depending which view is longitudinal or short axis. We just we have to make it our sun being perpendicular to the structure. Here, with just extending the knee and a little uh, rocking maneuver, makes sound being perpendicular to the all area of the uh, tendon and become homogen, uh, classic and normal pattern compared to this one. Or in short axis, the same as you can see here, we have extensor pollicis longus and extensor digitorium. You can see this one is oblique, the insonation of the probe is with rocking a little angling, hypoecho, but with correcting insonation and uh, maneuver, fanning, uh, left uh, forward or backward or heel toe, whatever, depending on what view you are in the plaque, in the short or long, with just uh, those maneuver and making perpendicular that artifact disappear. So always when you are dealing with any abnormal structure, especially when you see a cogenicity change, it, it, for example, some spot that should be hypoecho is hyperecho, or vice versa, hyperecho, it should be hyperecho, but it's hypoecho. Just with those maneuver, try to uh, see if change the cogenicity or not. And with this, you can rule out uh, at least this artifact and then looking for any pathology. We are done in this uh, part of lecture. I'm going to talk about the artifact in musculoskeletal ultrasound in completely very uh, long uh, lecture that shortly I hope to prepare and upload it. We are done up to the next time. Have a wonderful time and don't forget if it was useful please share it.